As we continue to wait for an announcement of an official Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, let us not forget that Capcom is no stranger to unfulfilled promises when it comes to Game Boy game collections involving Mega Man. Remember a long time ago when Capcom released their first wave of Mega Man collections? We had the Mega Man Anniversary Collection and the Mega Man X Collection for home consoles, and a few years later we got the Mega Man Zero Collection for Nintendo DS. These collections contain most of the entries in their respective lines, along with the ability to view concept art or listen to the soundtrack for each game that was on the disc, along with other unlockables. However, there was another collection that was teased and advertised but never saw the light of day. Mega Man Mania. This was meant to be a compilation of the five Mega Man Game Boy games as well as a bonus game, slated to be released for the Game Boy Advanced. For those who are unaware, these games were not mere portable downscales like so many other Game Boy ports at the time, but rather, they each have a unique place in Mega Man canon and introduced new bosses to the series. The gameplay and graphic style also ran very close to the original NES, just on a smaller screen and minus the color. The promised Game Boy Collection would apparently follow the same format as the Mega Man Anniversary Collection, with an art gallery and other unlockables. It also promised new and more colorful graphics, taking advantage of the Game Boy Advance's hardware upgrades over the classic Game Boy. This compilation was advertised in several gaming magazines and strategy guides, as well as having a fully produced commercial advertisement, but it never came to pass, and all we have to remember by are these promos, as well as what few documented screenshots and test footage from earlier builds have surfaced online. The screenshots depict the game's select screen as being similar to the late game boss selection from the classic Mega Man titles. If we examine some of the test footage, we see here in the upper corner that it says Z button options. But none of the consoles in the Game Boy family have a Z button. If I had to guess why it says that, I think it's because this footage was recorded from a cartridge being played on a Game Boy player for GameCube. Reference these screenshots that I sourced from Google. But this does beg the question. If we see this footage being played on a Game Boy player, does this mean that there was a playable build on a cartridge at some point? And is it still out there somewhere? Apparently, at one point, a ROM claiming to be for the Mega Man Anniversary Collection on GBA was up on RetroEmulators.com, but the link has since been removed, citing Nintendo's terms and conditions for its removal. They provide another link, but it leads nowhere either. But, fans have never given up hope that this project would be revived in one way or another. The collection has been reimagined, and mock-ups of what the game could have been or looked like have been made, one of which depicts a 3DS remake, and it looks very nice. Sadly, the idea behind this pitch never happened either. But, to paraphrase a certain legendary game reviewer, when game companies drop the ball, the fans pick it up. Several years later, a fan project to revive the collection was put into place to fulfill the broken promise. However, it fell through as well. But, from the ashes, we were able to glean an idea of why the original failed to launch. According to this article from the Rockman Corner, an interview with the developer of the fan project, Ian Mario, claims that the reason the collection was cancelled was that Capcom lost the original source code for the Game Boy games. They reportedly tried to rebuild some of the titles from the ground up, but eventually the collection was just cancelled altogether. In Mario's project was called Mega Man World, which is derived from the Japanese title of the Rockman Game Boy games, Rockman World. The plan was to have a game featuring a few robot masters from each of the Game Boy games and streamline them all into one gaming experience, complete with updated graphics inspired by the teasers for Mega Man Mania. At one point, there was apparently a playable demo for download, but it also has since been removed. The project was announced sometime around 2012, but not much else has been heard from it since then. So when the fans drop the ball, other fans pick it up. Fast forward to present day, and we have this. A 7-in-1 reproduction multi-card for GBA. Before we look at the games, let's take a moment to appreciate the cartridge. This is a beautiful shade of blue, and I love the art on this label. Even though it doesn't fall on Mega Man's anniversary, it has this title rather than Mega Man Mania because the collection for GBA was to share the title with its home console counterpart when it was eventually released, with Mega Man Mania being an early work-in-progress title. Now let's take a look at the software. Upon starting up, we see that the cartridge features not only all five of the Mega Man Game Boy games, but also the two Mega Man Extreme games for Game Boy Color. Similarly to the Battle Network Collection multi-card I talked about previously, the selection menu isn't really anything extraordinary. But unlike said repro, it shows us the title screen and opening cinematics for whichever game the cursor is on. Interestingly enough, when you select the game, the intro keeps playing, showing us that the cartridge is running the game before we even select it. This, however, unfortunately removes a feature from the original Game Boy cartridges, where you used to be able to change the base palette with the D-pad before the game started, if the cartridge was plugged into a Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advanced. But, if you press the L and R buttons together, you get the option to add several enhancement hacks to the game, like auto-fire, speed hacks, frames per second counter, changing the gamma levels, or using save states. You can change the palette here, instead of having to use the D-pad on the loading screen. This card also includes the Super Game Boy border for Mega Man 5, so that's pretty nice. Just making an observation here, but for some reason there's a space between Mega and Man on Mega Man 2, but not on the others. Not sure why. 
For curiosity's sake, I decided to check to see if this cartridge has the same reset quirk that the Battle Network cartridge did. It does not. If you soft reset, whenever the game allows you to, you're still in the title that you selected, but if you turn the console off, you go back to the title screen. This makes me wonder if the reset quirk from the previous cartridge was just coincidence, or if it was an intentional design choice, since it could be capitalized on to gain bonuses in the DS version of Battle Network 5. I do feel like that I should add the stipulation, however, that on the eBay listing I bought this from, it claims that the cartridge saves perfectly well. Mine does not for some reason. This isn't as big an issue because Mega Man 1 through 5 are password based, and I can pretty easily get through Mega Man Extreme 1 and 2 in one sitting. The cartridge does offer a sleep mode, so I could simply put it to sleep and come back to it later if I need to. But whenever I power off the console, it deletes the save files from the two Extreme games as well as any save states I've used. So on the whole, I'm glad I came across this repro as well. It may not have the extra concept art or updated graphics, but it's a wonderfully kind gesture from a loving fanbase. It warms my heart to see that even all these years later, though Mega Man has suffered from broken promise upon broken promise, the fans are still doing things like this and other pet projects to keep the franchise alive and well. But what do you think? Is Capcom ever going to finally release legacy collections for the rest of the franchise? Why was the fan revival project of Mega Man Mania never finished? And should I review other bootlegs and repros outside of the Mega Man series? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you.